The first place you and I are to align ourselves in this year of divine alignments. Of divine alignments. My charge this morning to us is we are to align ourselves first to his leading. Proverbs 13 verse 15. Proverbs 13 verse 15. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 15. Let me know once you have found it. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is... Good understanding gives what? But the way of... Trans, that word transgressors is translated ignorant. But the way of the ignorant is hard. So we see here that favor does not only come necessarily uh, from prayer or any other way we traditionally believe favor comes, you know, by, by having connections or, 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 you know, you have to know someone who knows someone who knows someone. No, the Bible says good understanding. Good understanding. So good understanding gives favor, but the way of the ignorant or transgressors is hard. That when the Bible says the way of the transgressor, it, is, it means your way will be hard when you are ignorant of the path of God for your life. Your way in business, in family, in life, in, in your personal development will be hard, will be frustrating if you are ignorant of the path of God for your life. Proverbs 16 verse 9. Proverbs chapter 16, we'll read from verse 9. Proverbs 16 verse 9. Proverbs 16 Verse 9, the heart of man plans his way. But the Lord does what? So the heart of man, or that word heart, you can put the mind of man, plans his way. But even after he has planned and he has his 2018 resolutions and his strategy, the Bible still says that the Lord will establish his steps. Psalms 23, verse 1. A psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. The Lord is my shepherd. Friends, I want to emphasize this morning the importance of divine guidance. If you and I are to be aligned to God's will, we must be aligned to his voice. If we are to be aligned, if we are to avoid many tragedies, many setbacks, many mistakes, many unfortunate pains, we are to align ourselves to God's voice. To God's voice. Does that make sense? So in 2018, if things are going to align themselves for your good, align yourself to his leading. In 2018, if things are going to align themselves, if things are going to work out for your good, if you want 2018 to be a year of prosperity, to be a year of great joy, to, to receive everything the man of God has declared over this commission and over your life, the first prerequisite, because every promise of God has a demand attached to it. There is no promise of God that is for free. So if you and I are to enjoy the benefit of Christendom in 2018, we are to align ourselves to God's voice. We are to align ourselves to God's voice. Do not believe people who tell you only the prophets can hear God. Any religion that makes you completely dependent on a man is not of God. Because Jesus did not tear the veil so that a few could come in. The first reason God created Adam and Eve was for fellowship. The point of that fellowship was because God knew in your capacity as your man, as a man, you are insufficient. As a man, you are insufficient. You are inadequate. So you need me to come and breathe into you. Adam did not name the animals because he was Adam. He did not he named every single animal. He, he, how, did, how, did he, how did he even survive? How did he grow? How did he develop in the Garden of Eden? Because the Spirit of God was in him, leading him, guiding him. 
As a Christian, one of the most important assets in your life is how much of God's leading you enjoy. How much of God's direction you are exposed to per minute, per second, per hour. You'll have times where literally God will even stop you right before you're about to do something. You've heard the prophet say many times, you come and prepare a message and almost 30 minutes to an hour before he gets here, the Lord tells him, no. Don't minister on that. Minister on something else. So what more someone who is full of carnality? Whose ear is blocked? That person is a disaster waiting to happen. What secures your destiny? I heard a very interesting thing a few weeks ago. It is not how much you earn that secures your future. It's how much you learn. Professions come and go. There are some professions right now that will be useless in a decade's time. In 20 years' time. There are some professions that will be useless. Completely controlled by robotics. So it is not how much you are earning that will secure your life. It's how much you are learning. And the first point, the first thing to learn is God's voice. God's leading. To be able to follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit said, turn left. Go right. Don't make this decision. Not now. Wait. If you and I are to be distinguished in 2018, the year of alignment, if your career is to align itself, God first needs to have your ear. Because if God does not have your ear, you don't have his hand. If God doesn't, there are too many people who are too busy for God. They are the ones who want to explain to God. No, Jesus, look, let me explain to you. I'm a, I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. Let me explain. This is how it happens. No, you are the son of God. You're not a doctor. If God doesn't have your ear, you don't have his hand. The quality of how well you and I pursue our God-given destiny is a function. Do you know that you can... <laughs> do you know that divine guidance will allow you to achieve destiny faster than normal? Divine guidance, to be guided. I know you have this plan for this business, but wait. I know you want to do this career, but wait. Oh, God will say, do it now. Do it now. If Moses had delayed to take the rod and strike the, the Red Sea, <laughs> an entire generation would have been wiped out. They would have died like all their prayer would be useless. All their fastings, sacrifices that they made would be useless unless there was a man in tune with divine frequency. When God said, strike now, the sea parted. Because when you are under divine guidance, the impossible becomes possible. When you are under the authority, under the tutelage of divine guidance, when you are under, when you are submitted to the voice of God, you no more use because even 2 Samuel says, by strength shall no man prevail. So we prevail in this life based on the quality of God's leading we enjoy. While vision shows you the promised land, God's guidance is what enables you to arrive there. While vision shows you the promised land, God's guidance is what enables you to arrive there. While vision shows you a great business empire, it is God's guidance that will allow you to arrive there. While your vision might show you a great family, a great institution, a great marriage. It is God's guidance that will allow you to get there. Don't assume God's voice. 
Don't assume we must end days of assuming. Because assumption is the mother of frustration. Because when, when it doesn't work out, what do you then say? I thought. I thought. I thought. So our vision might show you a great future. Whatever future is in your mind right now as a businessman, as a lawyer, as a doctor, as a financier, as a pastor, as a prophet, as an evangelist, everyone here has a vision and a, a divine assignment God has given them. There is no one sitting in front of me who is useless. There is no one sitting in front of me here who is useless. God did not make people useless. People make themselves useless. God did not make anyone useless. It is people who make themselves useless. By bad habits, by wrong direction, by wrong company, a bunch of things. People are the ones who make themselves useless, not God. Because every good and perfect gift comes from every good. No one here is useless. So everyone here has an assignment, a specific reason why heaven allowed you to come into this planet. But if you and I are to achieve it, the first question we should ask ourselves, how much of God's leading am I exposed to? How much of God's voice do I enjoy? Now, when I say voice, many people then think I, I'm talking about the audible voice of God. It's not what I'm talking about. But I'm going to get there in a moment. Are you still there? Proverbs 14 from verse 12. Proverbs 14 from verse 12. Proverbs 14 verse 12. Have you found it? There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are ways of... There is a way which seems right unto... He does not say right unto a sinner. He says, there is a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. So the Bible says, in a man's mind, he might think this is the way he should run his business. This is the way he should run his family. Because he believes that is how it is done. Do you know that we can, for, for, for me, do you know, there are times where we can just sit on, on beliefs, unfounded beliefs, based on nothing. Simply on just arrogance. So someone is arrogant of ignorance. So they are arrogant on something that inherently is, is wrong. Inherently, this belief is just, it's wrong. But you find there, there is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of, are the ways of death. Men will keep on, men that is women and men, will keep on getting frustrated in his pursuit of vision unless and until he is able to lay hold of divine guidance. You and I will keep on getting frustrated unless and until we can begin to move and walk with God. What does that mean? Listen to this or write this down. Divine strategy Divine strategy plus human energy equals fulfillment of destiny. Divine strategy plus human energy equals fulfillment of destiny. Your business can be a destiny. Your family can be a destiny. Your career, this ministry, your ministry can be a destiny. It will not be achieved by assuming this is what God said. Divine strategy plus human energy will result in the fulfillment of destiny. Not being connected to Zmaniban. Not being connected to this person or connected to that person. No, Divine strategy plus human energy equals fulfillment of destiny. When we are committed to his leading, friends, victory and success is inevitable. Why? Proverbs 4 verse 18 says, 
but the path, Proverbs 4, verse 18, but the path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. So the Bible says, the way of the just, that their path, in, whatever they do, just gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Which is why I said at the beginning, it is only ignorance that believes life must be full of struggles. Do you know a loose, I never knew this, but another translation of the word gospel is too good to be true. Too good. How is it possible that a normal person like me, born from, coming from nothing, coming from nowhere, God can lift me up and raise me and put me at the top of society. Too good to be true. Why? Because the path of the just is as a shining light. The path of your business, the path of your ministry, the path of your career, the path of your personal endeavors is as a shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day. Take your seats. So it is important to realize that divine alignment and divine guidance go hand in hand. Divine alignment. Have you seen when you are driving a car and the, the wheels are not aligned? Naturally, when you drive a car and you take your, your hand off the steering wheel, it is not supposed to, if the wheels are aligned, it is not supposed to veer off. But if the wheels are not aligned and you take the steering wheel or your hands off the steering wheel, the car will, and depending on how bad the alignment is, so there are some cars that when you take your hand off the steering wheel, it will still continue for a few meters or so. And then eventually begin to, because the, 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 the wheel alignment is not centered. It is not precise. And then depending on how bad, there's some cars you, re, you remove your hand, you get involved in an accident. <laughs> the car will just by itself. Because the wheel alignment is com it's completely misaligned. So in the same manner, it is important to realize that if everything in your life is to align to the will of God, you and I should be able to enjoy his leading. What is God saying per week, per, per day, per hour, per second? What is God saying? What is God saying? The Bible speaking in Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the... Unto what? To observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord God will do what? Set you... You set you high above Bulawayo. You set you high above Matabele land. You set you high above all nations provided you hearken. So you must only not hearken, but hearken. So the word diligently means there must be consistency in hearing the voice of God or in hearing the leading of God. If you are to be set high above the nations, if your business is to be a global business, if your career is to be a career that commands the respect of kings and queens and presidents, the Bible says you should diligently hearken to the voice. To the voice. To the voice of God. The glory and blessing that God has packaged for you is rooted in his voice. In whatever you are doing right now, the challenge is you will find most people are very lackadaisical because they see no future. When you see people behaving anyhow, it's because they see no future. Spending time with anyone. Doing anything anywhere with everyone. Their time is not guarded. 
Do you know even Jesus had the inner circle? But you find a child of God, he can go anywhere and still fit in. No, it's because they see no future. When you find people behaving carelessly, it's because they, there is no future they are seeing. Someone knows, prophet says, the word of God says, one leg, you, you, are, you, are, you are consulting which doctors on this hand. Then you are coming to church and asking for prayer. No, that person sees no future. You find someone playing with his education, playing with his time. Do you know that the children of wealthy people have very strict schedules? Are you aware of that? They get home from such and such a time to such and such a time, homework. From that time to that time, horse riding. From this time to that time, starting this extracurricular activities. The child of a poor man, when he gets home, play. So what does a child grow up thinking? Playing is normal. Until they play with their career. Until they play with God. Until they play with their parents. Until they play with their own lives. Because they believe playing is normal. Because the child, you have inculcated in the mind of the child that when you get home, look, everything else is peripheral. It's, it's secondary. It's school and what it's, 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 you can watch TV. I mean, for, forever. So that child grows up thinking, playing. So when you see adults playing, <laughs> it didn't start there. Playing with God. No, no, it's because right from a young age, playing was normal. People, others would be starting in the library, but now they are outside on Facebook. Others would be preparing for this when they are, they are playing because they grew up knowing, because in their minds, playing is normal. Are you still there? So everyone who hearkens to the voice of God, inevitably, friends, listen to this, will end up being distinguished. It does not matter where you are coming from. It does not matter what you are coming from. If you will hearken to the voice of God, you will end up being distinguished. If you follow the leading of God, your destiny, your future will be secured. Your future will be secured. Isaiah 48 verse 17. Isaiah 48 verse 17. Isaiah 48 verse 17. Thus says the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord, thy God, that does what? That teaches you to profit. So before you can profit, I must teach you. I am the Lord, thy God, that teaches you to profit which leadeth you by the way that you should go. So there is a way you should go. In your personal work with God, there is a way you should go. When others are eating, maybe you must be fasting. Do you know every demand the Holy Spirit will place on you is because he can see what is in front of you. I always tell young people who come and sit down with me, find out what God's demands are you right on demands are on you right now. Find out what God's demands, because if you don't know what, what are his demands, his commandments, if you would diligently hearken to my commandments to observe to do them, then you will be set high above the nations. Too many of us want promotion without process, recital without rehearsal. So to find out what, is, what are God's demands on my family right now? Besides the general demands, the tithe, giving, sacrifice, are there any specific demands that the Holy Spirit has on me right now? For my ministry, for my career. Maybe the Holy Spirit is saying, you have done this this way, it's time to move on to this branch of this career. Because the Holy Spirit knows at this point in time, he has aligned you to meet with this person.
or to meet with this institution. But before you can meet with that institution, he must first align you with his voice. Joseph was not promoted in the palace because he was a Hebrew. You are not promoted because you are Christian. Joseph was promoted because he had a spirit of excellence. Because anyone that possesses a spirit of excellence will stick out. Because the world celebrates mediocrity. Therefore, anyone, any institution, any organization that is full of excellence stands out. Take your seat. So Joseph was promoted because the Bible says, can we find another man in whom the spirit of God is in? What was that spirit? The spirit of excellence. Excellence in thinking. Excellence in conduct. Excellence in administration. But God first had to align him. <laughs> Sometimes the alignment is not nice. <laughs> How? He sent him to prison. <laughs> it was still aligning. <laughs> He sent him because God knew, I need to send you to prison so that you can learn a few principles. And the only way you can learn these principles effectively is if you are in the prison. So let me align you in prison first. <laughs> Put, raise your right up and say, Holy Spirit, align me. Prepare me for my destiny. Take your seats. Ikashakataka. bragadas. So, to be divinely aligned to God's plan and agenda for our lives for 2018, friends, we need to be divinely guided. Are you hearing what I'm saying? One wrong step can wreck a whole destiny. One wrong step can destroy years of work. It doesn't matter how great or colorful your vision is. Misdirection and misalignment can lead to many years of setbacks. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning. A wrong marriage will destroy you for eternity. Even if you are pursuing God, you won't be all systems go. You'll be operating probably at 20% your capacity. A wrong connection, a wrong business meeting will make someone steal your entire idea and profit from it. A wrong employee will turn... <laughs> a wrong employee will repel... Customers where your biggest business must come from. A wrong maid will put the devil in your children. Put your right hand up. Say, Holy Spirit, I need your voice. In 2018, open my ears to hear your voice. Take your seat. Jesus operated by divine direction. Why? John 5 verse 30. John 5 verse 30. The Bible says, I can of my own self do nothing. Even Jesus, the son of God, says, I am the son of God, but I can't do anything by myself. So who are you to think you can make, make uh, who are you to think you can make major decisions of your life by yourself? Get into a career without consulting God. In the days of our parents, when a person was to get married, the first thing they would ask is, is it the will of God? Or, what has God said? Now, when you tell someone you're going to get married, what, what is the first question they ask? Can I see his picture? It's how carnal we've become. Can I see his picture? What, what, what car does she drive? As if that car will still be in fashion 20 years later. 
after your neighbor, correct your mind. <laughs> Jesus said, John 5.30, I can of my own self do nothing as I hear. Not when I hear. <laughs> I, the son of God, of my own, I am the son of God. I am Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But even me, the, th the third person of the Trinity, the one who sits on the right hand of God, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I seem to have lost myself. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. So Jesus says, I can of my, I can't make any decision by myself. I must first consult God. Now, what I want to ask is, think about all the major decisions you have made in the year of 2017. Just think about them briefly. Now, ask yourself, of all of them, how many did you consult God on? It might have been a course to do. It might have been a business to start it might have been a relationship to enter. It might have been a ministry. How many times did you consult God? Because the way of the ignorant is hard. In fact, another version of Proverbs says, the company of the ignorant is among the dead. So, for an ignorant man, he's surrounded by death. Or an ignorant woman is surrounded by death. Death in thinking. Death in relationships, death in career, death in ministry, de everywhere he looks is dead. Simply because my people perish because they don't hear my voice. Shakopakai. Say, Holy Spirit, open my ears to hear you in 2018. Let me not make any decision without consulting you. Holy Spirit, Anything that is stopping me from hearing your voice, let it catch fire. Take your seats. Elijah says, this God before, be, before whom I stand, not before whom I stood. He said, this God, there shall be no rain. And I'm saying because I'm hearing him right now. <laughs> I'm hearing him. He's telling me to tell you there will be no rain. I'm hearing him. I'm not saying uh, things because I, I'm, I'm, I feel good in my stomach. No, I'm, I'm, stand, I'm standing before you, but I'm also standing before him. So I'm talking to you, but I'm hearing his voice. And I'm telling you there'll be no rain. And people said, people laughed at him and said, ah, look at this guy. Look at this guy who's mannering. Until their tongues were dry. The voice of God. Oh God, open my ears to hear your voice. Let me not enter a business partnership that will destroy the business I've been creating for the past 15 years. Let me not enter a marriage that will kill my destiny. Let none of my children enter a marriage that will kill their careers. Take your seats. Let's continue. Now, very, do you know even Jesus, the Bible said when Jesus was, when Jesus heard that Lazarus had died, the Bible did not say, and Jesus went. When you read your Bible very well, you'll see he waited two days. He waited two days before he went to go and resurrect Lazarus. Two days. He waited two days. Why? He was waiting. God didn't say anything to him. He waited for two days before he went and resurrected. He heard Lazarus has died. The first thing he did, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I 
So he had not heard. So he could not judge. He had not heard anything. So he could not speak. Because if I speak, I will have to supply my own power. <laughs> if I go and speak, I'll have to supply my own power. So he waited first, first day. Shaka prakala do sukayata katada. Inkotayata da sakata katadash. Prakada sakata kavakatadash. Mako sukatadash. One hour, two hours, three hours while healing. And then in the evening he went to the Mount Olive. Sakato prakasikata kalada. Father must I go. Father must I go. Zui. Do you know, for those of you who have used GPS, you know, the TomTom -tom, or any other type of GPS navigation system. Do you know when you put in a destination, when you're going on a highway, you put in, for example, we say Bite Bridge. You're living from here. The navigator will then say, drive straight for, how far is Bite Bridge? 332 kilometers. The navigator will say, drive straight for 332 kilometers. Do you know between here and Bulawayo, the navigator is quiet? Here in Bite Bridge, the navigator is quiet. <laughs> Why? It gave the instruction. But what do we want? Every five minutes, continue going for 200 kilometers. The next five minutes, continue going. It already said, go straight for, just listen and go. I can of my own self do nothing. So he did not hear. He knew, he already heard that if you go and do things by yourself without me. And there's Jacob. So he knew I can't go by myself. So he waited. She covered nothing. Second day, look up. Second day. Second day. Pradu Sakayadadash. The Lord said, Now go and resurrect him. Do you know the joy of hearing the leading of God? It makes you arrogant. Some of you have seen the things the prophets say. You think, ah, this man is crazy. Talking about MLC. And when you hear the leading of God concerning something, you are like a young brother who they started with him. And he went and he told his older brother, they, they hit me. His older brother now says, let's go and sort them out. When he was walking to his, his rivalries, he was very, you know, he's full of timidity. But now when he's walking with his older brother, he walks a very powerful walk. My brother has said, we're going to finish you today. So when you hear the leading of God, you are filled with confidence. In 2018, in the year of alignment, as you hear the leading of God, don't let anything dilute your boldness. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Don't let anything. If God says start that business, start it. You and the prophet say businesses are going to be starting every month. If you're one of those people, when you get home today, you're going to be researching. Yeah? There's a time to pray. Now there's a time to do homework. This industry, there are no clients here. It's oversaturated. You can't tap into it. You need to be connected. You have to have a civil servant contract. If God says start it, start it. Start it with arrogance. Take your seat. The righteous are as bold because when you hear the, 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 the leading of God, you are filled with unusual boldness. And it is up to you to maintain that boldness. Because the enemy immediately will try and come and intimidate you. Why? The Bible says in Acts chapter 28 that Paul was going to the city, I think of Malta, with prisoners, about 70 prisoners. And they had just escaped or there was a shipwreck. And after the shipwreck, they now went to this island full of barbarians, I think. And the Bible says that when he was now making a fire, a viper, a snake, came out and did what? Attached itself to Paul's hand. 
Because the enemy said, okay, we tried to kill you in the shipwreck. You didn't die. Now we'll send a snake to bite you. What does the Bible say? And Paul shook off the beast. Shook it off. So when you are starting something, God has said you must do. And you start seeing intimidations. Because you will see them. You will see them. And you start seeing intimidations. You go to that office, they deny you. You go to that office, they reject you. Shake off the beast. You applied, they rejected you. Shake it off. Not now. Pastor, pastor, please stand with me in prayer. Shake it off. Who is it that saith it and it comes to pass? When the Lord has not commanded it. Take your seats. Let's finish. So, very briefly, why do we need divine guidance? Why do we need divine guidance in this year of alignment? Why do you and I need divine guidance? Number one, for correct timing. For correct Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. The Bible says, for the vision is yet for an appointed, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. So every vision is for an appointed time. There is always a right time to step out. There is a right time to start a business. There is a wrong time. There is a right time to invest and there is a wrong time. There is a right time. Anything in your life right now indicates how much you respect seasons and times. Seasons and times. Last year was a year of brutal evangelism. Let me just give you a heads up. This year, <clears throat> if you thought last year was anything, this year, we are increasing the fire tenfold. So what does that tell you? If you are someone who does not like ministering Christ, okoyo, okoyo, be careful. Because you will stick out like a sore thumb. Times and for the vision, take your seats, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak. So you need divine guidance for correct timing. Why? The Bible says, he makes all things beautiful, Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11. He makes all things in your life in your business, in your family, in your relationships, in your ministry, Kira Tasoka Ento Labanika Shenta. He makes all things beautiful in his time. The challenge is many people are always come to God and saying, Lord, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. You're taking time, you're taking time. Father, you're taking time. But the Bible says he makes all things beautiful in his time, not your time. So if you are not aware of his time, or you are assuming his time, you live a life of frustration. Because assumption is the mother of all frustration. Assuming. Never make a decision unless you are fully convicted that this is God's leading about it. It doesn't matter the opposition that is there. Move forward. Move forward. So, you and I need divine guidance for correct timing. For correct timing. Yes, God might have said something, but the question is, when must it be done? Yes, God might have said, this is the career I've ordained for you. But the question is, when must it be done? Now, when you locate when it must be done, it is not now licensed to sit down and do nothing. Because the way of the... A little sleep, a little slumber. Or poverty will come knocking like a thief. So... 
Pastor, the Lord has impressed very heavy on my spirit to do such and such and such. The question now becomes, when must it be done? done? Why? Delayed obedience is as good as disobedience. Delayed obedience is as good as disobedience. Delayed obedience is as good as disobedience. So whenever or whatever God has shown you to do also has a time in which he wants it done. Whatever God has shown you to do. Now, there might be people here who have, are not seeing anything because they have not got to a stage in their relationship with God where God can show them what to do. It doesn't mean you are wicked. It simply means you need to set your desire on fire. A lot of the times, many people do not hear from God, not because God is not speaking. They're just not hungry enough. They're not hungry enough to make the extra effort to say, I'm going to take the next three days fasting. Lord, what is your direction for me for the first quarter of this year? For, the, for 2018, personally, what are you saying for my life? If I am to be aligned for your will for my life, if this business is to survive in this year, what are you saying? What are you saying? Because it's easier to assume because it requires no responsibility. It's easier to assume because it, it requires zero responsibility. What are you saying for my children? What are you saying for my family? What are you saying for this ministry? If I'm a department head, what are you saying about this department? How can we achieve to the best of our abilities in the ushering department, in the worship department? What are you saying for the first quarter of this year? God will then show you what he wants to do or what he wants done. And then now you ask him, Lord, when must it be done? When must it be done? So you and I need divine guidance for correct timing. Correct timing. There is nothing as frustrating as doing the right thing at the wrong time. Why? You ask yourself, but God, you said this. You said I must do this. And God is saying, I did, but I did not say now. You were just too overzealous and you went ahead. You didn't hear me. So we, in 2018, if you and I are to move at the same speed Elijah moved at, before Elijah ran faster than the horses, the Bible said he prayed seven different types of prayers. He said he bowed his and you know when you're reading the word of God, you need to um create the image in your mind. The Bible says he was kneeling, yes, and it said he put his head in between his when you get home i want you to try and do that <laughs> i want you to try and do that and feel how uncomfortable it is because you never get divine leading in the place of comfort times when you have to fight for god's voice so divine guidance is also needed to avoid overstaying at a phase Divine guidance is also needed to avoid overstaying a phase, overstaying a certain area in your life. When a person overstays a phase, frustration becomes inevitable. When you overstay a certain phase in your life, according to God's time, you must be finished and done with school by now. But because you have not tuned your ear to move at his pace, to listen to his leading, everything that he aligned for you to be done within that time now needs to be aborted or postponed. Simply because you did not follow his leading, his voice, and you end up overstaying a phase. Overstaying a phase. It might be in your business, it might be in your personal life end up overstaying a phase. Why do I say that? God said to the people of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 1 from verse 6. Deuteronomy 1 verse 6. The Lord our God spoke unto us in Horeb saying, what was he saying? I say that like a believer. You have 
you have say it one more time you have Deuteronomy 2 verse 3 Deuteronomy 2 verse 3 what does it say you have So if they did not hear God's voice telling them, you've been here for too long, turn northward, they would have remained and died there. Unless they had heard the leading of God to turn northward, they would have remained and died there. So you find people in the house of God remain and die in stages of their life simply because they cannot access the leading of God. Their careers die premature deaths simply because they cannot access the leading of God. So they go around at the mercy of men, at the mercy of people, knocking from office to office to see who can help them. They are friendly not because they like, you know, they're just naturally that way. They are friendly because they're always trying to look out who can help them. Simply because they have overstayed, they are full of frustration, they have overstayed an area in their life and they have not accessed the leading of God. God told them, you have come past this mountain for too long. So, divine guidance is needed to avoid overstaying a phase. As a ministry, as a community, as a family, in your career, you and I need divine guidance so that we move at the speed of God. So that we move at the speed of at the speed of God. Number two. Why is divine guidance needed? Number two. For security of destiny. For the security of your destiny. Everyone seated in front of me has a destiny that God has given them. Everyone seated in front of me has a destiny that God has given them. But this assignment remains utterly, utterly vulnerable when you are walking outside of divine plan. So your assignment, the assignment God has given you as an individual, it might be to be a business tycoon. It might be to be a, to be a, be a, a, a force to contend with in the legal sector. Uh, to be a, 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 an exceptional doctor in this region, in this country, in Africa. It might be to be a researcher. It might be to be an acad academician. It might be to be a prophet a mighty prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, moving mightily in the ways of God. That destiny will always be vulnerable as long as you are outside of God's plan. Why? Moses said to the children of Israel, him who breaks the hedge, the serpent shall bite him. He who breaks the, the, the path God has given us, the one who breaks it will be beaten by the serpent. But some people, their calamity is purely because they just don't want to follow God. That's just stubborn. God called the children of Israel in Exodus chapter 32, I think. You are a stiff-necked people. God is being stiff-necked. God is saying, turn your head. God is saying, no, look left. You are, no, I like looking this way. It's, it's easier. I've looked this way for the past 20 years. It's comfortable. God is saying, look left. Stiff-necked people. Stiff-necked people. So, you and I need divine guidance for security of destiny. What, what will secure your business in 2018 is not how many contacts you have. Trust me, but by living in this country by now, I'm sure you know, <laughs> as long as money hasn't been paid, there's nothing. Contract or no contract. Because you go to the court that's another fight on its own. So what will secure your business, your interests, your family, your ministry to God is divine guidance. In 2018, in the year of alignment, as long as you are divinely guided, as long as we are divinely guided, and we are privileged to have a prophet of our lives who hears God per second, so even if you want to refuse, God said, I love you so much, I'll give you someone who will speak on my behalf when you are being stubborn. <laughs> 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 
it is not important to merely get results in life. It is more important to secure your destiny. Results come and go. I was, start, I was speaking to some people yesterday and telling them, social media, is a, social media is a heaven of lies. Because everyone on social media, their lives are perfect. Uh, everyone is, everyone is, is living it. And what, what, what? It's full of, not all that glitters is gold. You heard the story of the 50 cent who was hiring jewelry and cars just to post on social media. They were not even his. Now someone feels pressure. It is not important to merely just get results. What is more important is secu to secure your destiny. To secure your destiny. I heard, the, I, I heard the term once from a man of God that life is in stages and men are in sizes. So what will determine if you go through a stage of your life is your size. Let's continue. When you follow God's leading, you commit his integrity to back you up. When you follow God's leading, you commit his integrity to back you up. And we know that God is a God of integrity. He says something and he will do it. When you follow his leading, you commit his integrity. Why? First Thessalonians 5.24, you don't need to turn there. You can just write it down. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Jesus said in Matthew 4 verse 19, follow me and I will make you. But before I can make you, you must follow me. So in God's plan, not everyone is called perhaps to do business or called to be a pastor or called to be in government or called to be a lawyer. Or not everyone, everyone has a secure path and destiny God has ordained for them. And lastly, you need divine guidance for preservation. 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 Very quickly for preservation. You can read by yourself Acts chapter 12, the story of Peter. The Bible says the angel came and guided him out, led him out. So his life was preserved because of the leading of the angel of God out of the prison. So you need divine guidance when everyone is complaining that there is no money in the banks and there is no, no one is getting employed and people are getting retrenched and the economy is shrinking and, 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 and the price of commodities is, is skyrocketing. You know, because I am... The man of God, Kenneth, Ken Kenneth e. Hagin, God spoke to him one day right before the recession and gave him very clear cut code direction told him a bunch of things reduce your budget by such and such stop doing unnecessary evangelism trips that are very expensive cut your stuff several clear directions it was because of the fact that he heard God that that ministry withstood the test of time and withstood the recession so, you need divine guidance for preservation. For preservation. There's times when you really want to go and do something and God will say, wait. Wait. Hold on. Oh, he won't talk. So, if God does not say anything, it is not <laughs> license to go. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just very quickly. How do I align myself to divine guidance before I close. How do I align myself to divine guidance? Number one, recognize God's kingdom is not a democracy. Recognize God's kingdom is not a democracy. He does not negotiate his leadership. He leads those who are willing to follow. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He does not shepherd dogs. He does not shepherd snakes. He does not shepherd foxes. He shepherds sheep. Enough, do you know, is it a lamb that you can slaughter a lamb and it will be completely silent? I think it's a lamb. Eh? A sheep. A sheep. You can take it, slaughter it, and it, will be, it won't 
scream or anything. <laughs> when God tells you, take 50% of your salary, give it a seed, you'll be screaming louder than a rabbit. <laughs> can God lead you? Can, can uh, your character, your disposition, your lifestyle, your habits, do they permit the leading of God? Is there a place for God to come in and take control and say, this is the way, walk ye in it. So number one, number one, how do I align myself to receive divine guidance, recognize that God's kingdom is not a democracy. He does not negotiate his leadership. He leads those who are willing to follow. Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. And John 5, 30, we've read that. Number two, we are guided principally by his word. You and I are guided principally by his word. So if anyone comes to you and is telling you, yeah, I believe the spirit of the Lord is saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. ask them, have you attended Bible school? Or someone who come in woman to you. He watched Superman two weeks ago. Because he had supper late, his stomach is feeling funny. He dreamt someone flying. He comes with my sister. I believe in 2018, God is saying you are flying. There's many people we've been played with. Simply because someone, a, a, a false voice came to them. And because you know, if you don't know the word of God, anyone can play with you. So we are guided principally by his word. We are guided principally by his... So before you go around asking God to... God, give me audible voice. Give me audible voice. The first audible voice you should hear is the word. Secondly, we are guided principally by God's so if you want to align yourself for divine guidance or to receive God's divine guidance, how much of his word is in you? The word of God says, thy, thy word, Psalms 119 verse 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Every great future is hidden in discoveries made in the word. Do you know a pastor can preach something to you and it enters your head, but you can find something by yourself and it enters your spirit. It is not what enters your head that will prove or help you withstand the storms of life. It is what enters your spirit. Because you have not noticed when things start getting hot, all those scriptures in your head start dissipating. So, the word of God that helps you grow is the word that is in your spirit, not in your mind. Hallelujah. So, we are guided principally by his word. Deuteronomy 28 says, like you read, read it already. Isaiah 30 verse 21, and your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it when you turn to the right or to the left. Isaiah 30 verse 21. Number three, as we conclude, Submission to the Holy Spirit. Submission to the Holy Spirit. The Spirit speaks and it is in your best interest to heed His voice. In 2018, if you and I are to align ourselves and experience the unusual power of God's hand in our lives, it is important and paramount that we are submitted to the Holy Spirit. Not submitted occasionally. Not one leg in, one leg out. But completely submitted to the Holy Spirit. The Spirit speaks and like I said, it is in your best interest to heed His voice. Paying attention to His leading is extremely crucial in achieving success in the kingdom of God. If you and I are to achieve success, we should ask ourselves, are we submitted to the Holy Spirit? Why? The Bible says the Spirit of God will not contend with men. You know, the Holy Spirit will never fight with you. The Holy Spirit will give you an ass assignment or he will, he will give you a leading and he, he will gently prompt you again. And gently prompt you. That's why you find people who say things like, and God forced me. 
and said, if you don't do this, you over-exaggerate things. God doesn't force anyone. God does not force any. In fact, a person who thinks he's cheating God is cheating himself. <laughs> I couldn't tithe last month because God knows my situation. <laughs> you will know your situation also if you don't tithe. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't do this. Before. No. How much of the Spirit's leading do you enjoy as a Christian? Are you able to be completely submitted to the Holy Spirit? It is in your best interest to heed his voice. He's still, Elijah called it the still small voice, which means you should, he says, my son, do you have, do you have Proverbs, I think it's Proverbs 4. Incline your ears to my sayings. Let them not depart from your heart. Keep them in the midst of your mouth, for they are life to them that find them. I forgot his Proverbs. I forget which Proverbs, which chapter it is. For they are life to them that find them, and a health unto all their flesh. So God was not speaking to anyone. He was only speaking to his sons. <laughs> I just said something there. God says, I only want to speak to my sons, and this is the word to my son. I immediately, do, you, have you, do you know, have you found the verse? Proverbs, Proverbs 4 verse 20. Proverbs 4 verse 20. Proverbs 4 as we close. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20. Shantakadaba. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. So God was only speaking to his sons. Because they that are led by the spirit, Romans chapter 8, are the, are the sons of God. They that are led. So whoever is not led by the Holy Spirit is not a son. And people who are not sons are not entitled to any inheritance. It's like someone coming to your home and demanding an inheritance from your father, who is not your sister, who is not your brother. You will chase that person away. So, God says, my son. Look at your name and say, are you a son? Don't be a bastard child. So, my son, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Verse 21. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life unto those that find them and a health unto all their flesh. Submission to the... Submission to the... Submission to the Holy Spirit. In closing, a sign of submission... If you want to tell that you are completely submitted to God, a sign of total submission is a life of prayer. Prayerlessness demonstrates independence from God. A person who is prayerless, it doesn't matter how many times they say, God, I love you, Lord, I love you, Lord, Father, I love you. I mean, they can even come and cry in church. They can roll on the ground. If that person is prayerless, it, they have demonstrated they are independent of God. I don't care how many times they fast. You can fast until there's only bones left. When a person is, does, is prayerless, they are demonstrating that God, I don't need you. I don't need your leading. I don't need your voice. I don't need your hand. They can come here and they can cry. But as long as they are prayerless, they're telling God, I don't need you. So a sign of total submission to the Holy Spirit is the ability to live a life of prayer. A life of prayer. So in conclusion, it is important to note that in 2018, you and I, per time, per second, per week, per hour, need to be able to articulate what God's leading is. He says, he leadeth me beside the... God will not lead us into confusion. Neither will he lead us into disappointment. Yes, there are times when he will lead you into testing. But if he's leading you there, that means he's given you the power to withstand that testing. 
or temptation. Hallelujah. I want us to pray very briefly in closing. To ask God, desperately ask God to open the eyes because Paul says that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. Shakata kalababasi prakatikwanesha.